Hey everybody, today is September 11th, 2023, and we're here in East Greenville, Pennsylvania, at the American Legion Post 184. And the reason why we are out here today on the 22nd anniversary of the terrorist attacks on September 11th, 2001, is to take a look at something that I've been wanting to document and show you guys for years now. I have driven up and down this road so many times, and every time I do drive up and down this road, I always see something that sits off to the side of it in the parking lot of the American Legion. And I've always wanted to document this, show this to you guys, talk about this, but for whatever reason, I've never been back out here to actually show this off to you guys. So today, on the 22nd anniversary, we are going to take a look at this. I figured today was the perfect day to finally drive out here, document this, show this to you guys, and talk about what sits right here in the parking lot of the American Legion. Although, before we do actually take a look at what we're out here to see, I wanna show off the building just a little bit more because it definitely has some age to it. Really awesome looking building. And I do believe out front on the ramp, there's actually an old millstone here, which is pretty cool. It says American Legion Post 184. I have no idea if this is actually a legit millstone or if this is just a, a replica of an old millstone, but either way, that is pretty awesome. And then around here to the side, they have something else pretty interesting. It's a deposit for used American flags in this old mailbox right here. So if you have an old flag that's become tattered, torn, maybe faded for whatever reason, really should not be flown any longer. You can drop it off here in this old, this old mailbox and then they are properly disposed of. But my question is, how are flags properly disposed of? Is there some kind of ceremony? Do they burn them? What do they, what do they do with flags when they're no longer able to be used? Comments down below, because honestly, I have no idea. Do they recycle them? I, I don't know what they do with old flags. And my assumption is there's probably some kind of ceremony in some proper way they dispose of the flags. They don't just go into a landfill, right? I, I have no idea. But if you know, leave a comment down below because now I'm curious. Well, that was good timing. As I'm walking away from the mailbox, a man from the Legion actually came out to collect the flags inside the mailbox. So I asked him what they do to properly dispose of the flags. And he says throughout the year, they collect them. And then once a year at the VFW, they have a whole ceremony where they burn the flags. And it is open to the public. Anybody can come out and watch this ceremony. Unfortunately, it just happened a couple of weeks ago, so I did miss it. But I'm thinking next year, when they hold the ceremony, I'm gonna have to find out when and check this out. I'm very curious to see what the actual flag burning ceremony is like. I've never seen one of those, but at least we know what they do to the flags now. And again, I'm, I'm very curious to see the ceremony. I'm gonna have to check it out. Okay, so the reason why we're out here today is not to take a look at an old building or a possible maybe antique, I don't know, maybe replica millstone, or even to find out information on the flag deposit mailbox, though now we do know, which is really, really awesome. But the reason why we're out here today on the anniversary of the terrorist attacks on September 11th, 2001, is to take a look at what sits right on the side of the American Legion's parking lot. We are here to see their 9-11 memorial. And this is one epic memorial. Like I said, I've driven past this many, many times before, up and down this road. And every time I do drive past this, I always think, wow, that is impressive looking. And one day I've got to pull over and I've got to check this out. So I feel like when it comes to 9-11 memorials, they do come in all shapes and sizes. I've been to some that are simply just plaques on the ground. I've been to a couple that are actual walkthrough attractions, which are really neat. And then sometimes they sort of fall in the middle, which I believe is sort of what we have here today with, with this memorial. It's honestly though, incredibly epic with the World Trade Towers there in the background and an actual piece of the towers right here that I can reach over and touch. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be touching these. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to be touching these, but something about touching them just seems right in a way. It, it just takes me back to that day on September 11th, 2001, watching the tragic events happen on TV, watching the planes fly into the towers over and over and over again, then watching the towers crumble down later on that day. It just, I don't know, touching these, touching this piece of history right here, it just takes me back to that day. It makes me remember that day. So again, I don't know if I'm supposed to be touching these. I don't know if I'm allowed to be touching these, but it just, I don't know, it just sort of feels right. So when you first come out here and you actually look at the memorial, you might be thinking that it is just dedicated solely to the World Trade Center, but it's not. It is actually a memorial dedicated to all the tragic events 
that happened that day. And they're all represented here, which is really, really interesting. Though, of course, the World Trade Towers are very, very heavily represented again there in the back and with a beam up front here. And then down here, there's actually some information on the World Trade Center. It says height 1,368 and 1,362 feet. Groundbreaking was August 5th, 1965. Opened between 1970 and 1973. April 4th, 1973 was a ribbon cutting. Destroyed September 11th, 2001. There's a latitude and a longitude. And then it says, not just a piece of steel, but a piece of our hearts. Sons of the American Legion, Squadron 184, dedicated September 11th, 2010. So again, the World Trade Towers are very, very, very heavily represented. But again, this memorial is dedicated to all the tragic events that happened that day. So if you look closely at the memorial, you will realize that these steel beams do sit on top of a Pentagon-shaped pedestal. And then all of that sits on top of a Pennsylvania-shaped piece of concrete. So the actual Pentagon attack is represented and Flight 93 is also represented. Though I don't believe that's actually where the flight went down. I wanna say that was more kind of in this sort of area of Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken, but still it's really awesome to see the Pentagon and Flight 93 also represented because I do feel that when it comes to 9-11 memorials, the towers are very, very heavily, pretty much always represented. But even though everybody says, never forget, always remember, sometimes I feel like some people do forget about the Pentagon and they do forget about Flight 93. So it's really awesome to see them represented here at this memorial. So the man from the Legion who was taking the flags out of the flag deposit mailbox, he was telling me that tonight at 5 p.m. they're holding a ceremony here, which I would love to see. But unfortunately, I won't be able to make it out here, which is definitely a shame because I would love to see and be part of the ceremony of the, the memorial, the dedication to those who sadly did pass away or for those whose, whose lives were, were tragically altered due to the horrible events that happened. Also, on top of that, I would love to be out here at night because from what I'm seeing, I believe all of this lights up. The World Trade Towers there, I think light up on top. The Flight 93 Star also lights up. So I'm sure at night, this looks pretty epic. This has to look amazing at nighttime. So I wish I could come back to the actual ceremony. I wish I could see the ceremony, be part of the ceremony. And I wish I could come back out here and see this lit up. One of these days, I'm gonna have to come back out here and see what this looks like at night. So if you do come out here to see the memorial, you should take a look at what sits next to it, which is pretty interesting as well. It's a roll of honor dedicated to those who sadly did pass away in different wars. But what's most interesting about this roll of honor is what sits behind it. I honestly would not have known about this if I hadn't just walked over here into the shade to get away from the blistering heat for a second. I walked back here and I saw this right here, the original roll of honor that once stood out here. As you can see, it had become brittle, it had fallen apart, but instead of just discarding this, instead of throwing it away or, or putting it in a basement or just putting it somewhere where nobody would see it, they put it on the back of the replacement. That is awesome. Again, as somebody who loves history, as somebody who loves to see history saved, the fact that they did this is really, really cool. That is something I totally would have done myself. If I had something historical and I replaced it, I would have put the, the old historical piece, the piece that maybe didn't look as good anymore, the piece that had fallen apart, I would totally put it on the back. So if you do come out here to see this memorial and you're checking out the, the roll of honor, make sure you, you walk behind to see the original roll of honor. That is awesome. Also on the other side of the memorial is a flag here, which kind of makes me feel like I should be taking my hat off in, uh, in respect. It is at half mast after all, but you can see this is also dedicated to those who sadly did pass away in our armed forces. There's all these different plaques here, all the different seals for the different departments of the armed forces, including a POW, MIA seal. And then right here is a sundial, which says dedicated May 30th, 1976 in recognition of the United States Bicentennial in memory of our comrades who served in the armed forces of our nation, 1776 to 19. 76 so that is pretty awesome all the different seals around here as well this is pretty cool and again the flag currently flying at half mast in in memorial of those who did pass away sadly on on september 11th 2001 i feel like my hat should probably be staying off so before we do leave i guess i will talk quickly about where i was on september 11th 2000 
and one because they always say, where were you that day? I was in college that day. I was in the dark room. I went to, I went to college for photography. I do have a degree in photography. I was there in the dark room doing some work and I started hearing people muttering about something. Everybody was talking about something going on. I had no idea what it was, really wasn't paying attention to what people were saying because I was busy doing my work. I got done my work, went out to the cafeteria area and they had wheeled a TV out there and everybody was huddled around the TV watching something happen again. I had no idea what was going on. I walked over to the TV and saw the tragedy unfolding right before my eyes and I realized what craziness was going on. Right after that, the school said, everybody go home. You're all, you're all going home. We're probably gonna be closed like the rest of the week. Sure enough, they, they were. So I, I actually didn't go home. I drove to work because I did not know if I would have to go into work or not. So I drove to the mall that I was working at. Sure enough, the mall was also shut down. Everything was just shut down that day. I couldn't call anybody. All the, all the phone lines were jammed. Couldn't call my family, couldn't call my girlfriend, couldn't call my boss, couldn't call anybody to find out what was going on. So crazy awful, terrible, horrible day. Like I said, I had no idea what was happening until I finished my schoolwork, went out to the cafeteria, saw everybody watching the tragedy on TV. Then of course I went home and then I continued to watch the tragedy unfold, saw the towers fall. It was a terrible, awful day, but that's where I was on September 11th, 2001. I was, I was in college watching all this happen on a little TV in the cafeteria. But all right, guys, with that, I do think we are just about done. But I wanted to bring you out here to show you this amazing memorial dedicated to all of those who lost their lives on September 11th, 2001. Though, honestly, I feel like this memorial is dedicated to all of those whose lives were simply just affected that day on September 11th, 2001. Pretty awesome that this sits out here. Pretty amazing. You can come out here and touch a piece of this history again. Don't know if we should be touching this, but I feel like feel like it's just it's just the right thing to do but all right guys so where were you on september 11th 2001 where were you when the towers were hit where were you when they fell i want to hear your stories leave them down below but all right guys again with that we are done so as always guys thank you so much for checking out this video be sure to hit the like button hit the subscribe button check down below for links to patreon if you guys do become a patron i will send you a postcard every single month from the road also check down below for a link to spreadshirt where you can grab yourself retro rest stop t-shirts proceeds both from spreadshirt and from patreon to help support the show and to keep the show going they bring us out to places like this so i really do appreciate it and if you guys watch this video all the way until the very end i'm gonna say hashtag just do hashtag never forget. All right, guys. So again, thanks for watching. Like I said, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And if you do hit that subscribe button or you are subscribed, then I will see you tomorrow. Bye.